This is me. I like trees, but I'm not a tree hugger. Or a hippie. I believe the effects on the planet's climate of man-made CO2 are overestimated or exaggerated. Swampy may not agree, but that's not what this film's about. I wanted to know about fracking, and I wanted to know because there was a fracking test site 1.3 miles away from my house, and I didn't even know about it at the time. So what is fracking, or hydraulic fracturing? This is what I found so far. Like any conventional oil or gas site, they have to drill into the ground to the source of the fuel. In the case of shale gas, they drill down to the shale, then drill horizontally. This could be up to a mile or so. Next, they line the hole with concrete. And then, they send down a small explosive charge to fracture the shale. The next stage is to pump fracking fluid down the well at great pressure. This causes further fractures throughout the rock. Most of it is then pumped out of the well. Next, the well is capped and sealed so the gas can be collected. OK, that's the theory of a perfect frack job. It all seems quite straightforward when presented like that. But, and there is a big but, life isn't that simple, is it? I do have some concerns and unanswered questions. So I started looking into it a bit deeper. Deeper than the energy company's PR, that is. After all, PR is just another word for propaganda, isn't it? Let's address the explosions and high pressure fracking of the rock. I heard that fracking caused small earthquakes near Blackpool, so I looked this up, and sure enough it did. That got me to thinking, what's the geology under the places where the fracking? Now, I'm not a geologist, so I found the information confusing. I just have to trust they won't frack in areas with weak geology. The UK isn't really known for its earthquakes anyway. I did find something alarming though. Areas around California are well known for their earthquakes. With it being on the San Andreas Fault. Now, here's the scary bit. Energy companies are actually fracking in the middle of Los Angeles. This speaks volumes about the mentality of the fracking companies. It seems they'll drill anywhere, no matter what the risk, just to make a few quid. Earthquakes aren't so much of a concern in the UK, so my attention moved on to what is really my big worry. Water. When I was looking on the British Geological Survey website, I saw a map which showed my area. It's right over what's termed as a highly productive aquifer. I guess this means that there's lots of drinkable water down there. For anyone who draws from this aquifer, it's important it should be clean. Places like the big breweries in Tancaster, local farms, towns and villages in the area, they all need to take great interest in fracking as their water supply could be affected. How? Well, I discovered that fracking is not as safe as the company's PR would have you believe. Fracking well failures are actually common. I found out that the concrete that lines the drill hole can fail, and as the drill hole goes straight through the aquifer, this can contaminate the water with both gas and residue fracking chemicals. 
This is one of the areas where the fracking companies have really muddied the water, pun intended, with their propaganda using terms like trouble with sustained casing pressure. Now to me that means a leak, but to them it means keeping the pressure levels high enough during a frack. Surely if the pressure drops, then it's obvious to me there must be a leak, but they will admit this. The technology of cement is very well known in the oil and gas industry and has gotten safer because of this. But concrete does crack. Although there are industry guidelines to do with concrete, the cementing is not regulated in any way. And drilling companies have been known to try and save a bit of money by not doing a proper cement job. The Deepwater Horizon well in the Gulf of Mexico is supposedly an example of a poor cement job. And look what that costs the environment. The pressure used when pumping the fracking fluid can be up to 15,000 pounds per square inch in a modern fracking well. The record, I believe, is £22,000 per square inch. The concrete lining can only tolerate so much pressure. Add to that the issue of vibration and moving geology. You can only blow up a balloon so far before it bursts. This means that the process of fracking itself can directly lead to well failure. This is probably one of the reasons why 5% of wells fail immediately. It's also estimated that up to 50% of all wells will fail over the next 30 years. If you factor in the tens of thousands of wells potentially be placed around the country, this would mean tens of thousands of failed or leaking wells. What would that do to the country's water supply? How much water is used and where does it all come from? More importantly, where will it all go? First, let's look at what fracking fluid is. It's composed of 90% water, 9.5% is sand and the other half a percent is a cocktail of toxic chemicals like benzene, hydrochloric acid, ethanol, etc. There are usually around a dozen different chemicals used in the mix. This would depend on the geology and the secret recipe from the producers like Halliburton. The cocktail is regarded as a commercial secret, so we don't know precisely what's being used in each frack. 0.5% doesn't seem a lot, but that's half a percent of a really big amount as we're about to find out. One well can use 5 million gallons of water for each frack. But each well pad can drill horizontally in different directions from the same well pad. Let's say one well pad drills in four different directions. This means one well pad could use up to 20 million gallons of water. This is usually drawn from a local source to reduce transport costs. I wonder if the next time there's a hosepipe ban, if it'll apply to the fracking companies. According to the fracking company's propaganda, that's the same amount of water a golf course uses in a month. That might be true if it's an underwater golf course. How many lorries will it take to bring in that volume of water? If each lorry can carry 4,000 gallons, that would be 5,000 lorries over the course of each frack. Can the small country roads around your area cope with that number of lorries? I know the roads in my area can't. Then, there's the same amount of liquid to be taken away from the site. That's another 20 million gallons, if they manage to pump it all out. 
with a hundred thousand gallons of highly toxic chemicals in it. This water is no longer usable. This fact alone makes a mockery of the feasibility of fracking in many parts of the country without substantial disruption to the local community. However, the elephant in the room of all this is what is done with all the waste fracking fluid. I've looked very hard and can't find a satisfactory answer to this question. There is a company called Remsol who claim to be able to deal with radioactive waste. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. The fracking fluid, when it comes out of the ground, is contaminated with radioactive material. So, this company called Remsol, who claim to be able to deal with radioactive waste, well, they don't actually do it themselves, they subcontract it out to an unnamed atomic nuclear research facility. So, however that is, is anyone's guess. The only place I know in the UK that can deal with radioactive waste is Sellafield Nuclear Plant. But that can cope with anything like the volume of waste predicted. This is what the government says about it. This was taken from the Department of Energy and Climate Change reports. Safe disposal of flowback fluid. Flowback fluid is what they call the used fracking fluid. It's also sometimes called produced water. The operator must dispose of the fluid safely. It is categorised as mining waste. So the operator must obtain an environmental permit for its disposal from the relevant environmental regulator and have an agreed waste management plan in place. The method for disposal can be on-site treatment with reuse of water and disposal of remaining liquids and solids to a suitable licensed waste treatment and disposable facility. Removal off-site to a suitable licensed waste treatment and disposable facility. Disposal to a special sewer. Special sewer? Whatever that means. With the permission of the relevant wastewater utility company. As I mentioned earlier, some of the substance is radioactive. What they call NORM, or Naturally Occurring Radioactive Minerals. This is what the report says about the radioactive waste. Safe management of naturally occurring radioactive minerals. On some sites, flowback fluid, which is the used fracking fluid, can contain low levels of naturally occurring radioactive minerals, or NORM, such as radium, similar to those found in granite rock. If the flowback fluid contains NORM above certain limits, the relevant environmental regulator will require the operator to apply for a radioactive substance license. Where the flowback fluid is not radioactive enough to require a license, it will still be covered by regulations on the disposal of mining waste. Who's going to test this stuff to see if it's radioactive or not? Any operator intending to dispose of radioactive material must make a radiological assessment. Ah, so they do it themselves. Give a detailed plan for safe handling and disposal at an approved facility. OK, so where's all these approved facilities going to come from? The assessment must demonstrate sufficient protection for people and the environment. Well, I wouldn't disagree with that. But I also wouldn't hold my breath. There is a problem with getting rid of this stuff and the fracking companies know it. This is probably why 2 million gallons was dumped in the Manchester Ship Canal and why they've been seen doing this in America.
At the beginning of this video, I said I wasn't a tree hugger or a hippie. But after the little bit of research that I've done, it seems like the only people who are saying anything against fracking are people like these. Camping at the roadside in all weathers. They do it because they know the harm fracking can do. Maybe it's time we all embrace the inner hippie insiders and join them. I have.